an empty hall. Uh, meanwhile, here at home, the Department of Homeland Security is updating its alert system to help the American people stay vigilant and safe. And as always, our extraordinary men and women in uniform continue to put their lives on the line in this campaign. Meanwhile, the Mirror UK reports, hackers have claimed that a number of Islamic State supporters' social media accounts are being run from internet addresses linked to the Department of Work and Pensions. The hacking collective showed Mirror Online details of the IP addresses used by a trio of separate digital jihadis to access Twitter accounts, which were then used to carry out online recruitment and propaganda campaigns. At first glance, the IP addresses seem to be based in Saudi Arabia, but upon further inspection using specialist tools, they appeared to link back to the Department of Work and Pensions. The British government has admitted selling large numbers of internet addresses to Saudi Arabia, but has refused to reveal how much it has earned from the transaction. Although the government announced plans to auction its surplus IP numbers, it can now be revealed that a chunk of them went to Saudi Telecom and the Saudi-based mobile telecommunications company. Of course, the inept, record-breaking, tax-sucking behemoth known as the U.S. federal government, with all of its trillions spent on surveilling the average American's phone calls, emails, and browser history, and storing it all in a huge database guarded by psychotic thugs, can't be bothered with monitoring the social media of potential terrorists entering the United States. The Hill reports, Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson decided against ending a secret U.S. policy that prohibits immigration officials from reviewing social media posts of foreigners applying for U.S. visas. A DHS spokesman told ABC News that in the fall of 2014, the department began three pilot programs to include social media in vetting, but officials say it's still not a widespread policy and review is underway. Could the massacre that occurred in San Bernardino have been prevented had the feds actually done what most Americans thought they'd been doing all along? Probably not. The TSA can barely do their job, sporting a pathetic 95% failure rate. The status quo is tearing into two separate realities. The arrogant compulsive fabrication the criminals in Washington, D.C. are still hawking, and another reality that for most Americans is a big pill to swallow. The growing evidence that layers of a trillion dollar shadow government's nefarious inner workings are exponentially coming to light. For many Americans, admitting that your president is a traitor, based upon all of the evidence, is difficult to look squarely in the eye. You know, George W. Bush, after he staged 9-11 with his daddy, he said, you're either with us or with those Al-Qaeda terrorists they hired on record. Well, I got news for the New World Order. You're either with humanity or you're against us, and we're coming. John Bound for Infowars.com. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here late, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. I've been an investigative reporter and a journalist for 35 years. I've worked in every major media market in the United States, and I've written for more than 100 newspapers and magazines nationally and internationally. So last September 17th, I became the first journalist in U.S. history to go to the U.S. National Archives and the Library of Congress and pour over the thousands of pages of documents in both places to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt or any refutation of the facts that Prescott Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush, and George Herbert Walker, his maternal great-grandfather for whom his daddy is named, were Nazi traitors to the country who should have been tried for treason. Prescott Bush was the grandfather of George W. Bush and the father of George Herbert Walker Bush, and George Herbert Walker Bush is named for his father-in-law, George Herbert Walker. Prescott Bush graduated from Yale in 1917 and was in Skull and Bones with E. Roland Harriman, who was the younger brother of W. Averill Harriman. The Bush family really had nothing going. They were essentially social climbers and opportunistic people. At the time that Prescott Bush met Dorothy Walker, he was a tire salesman. And George Herbert Walker, as all fathers do when their daughter's going to marry someone, uh, said in his heart, you know, it, it's, not a, it's not an appropriate thing socially that my daughter marry a tire salesman. So he brought Prescott Bush first into Brown Brothers Harriman and then Union Banking Corporation. Uh, in actuality, it was anything but a bank. It was essentially a Nazi money laundering operation that had a lot of tentacles into a lot of different other businesses. They owned a, a shipping line called Hamburg American Line, for example, which was the first Nazi front business seized, although the line was no longer operational in 1942. In the early 1930s, it transported Nazi spies into the U.S., and then their promotional ads offered cash rewards to any American citizens who would go back on Hamburg American lines and proselytize for Hitler. Eight months after the U.S. had entered the war, the New York uh, Herald Tribune ran a front page article, Hitler's Angel has three million in U.S. Bank. 
and it caused a major scandal and just rocked the world of politics. Brown Brothers Harriman, which George Herbert Walker and Prescott Bush were affiliated with and partners in, uh, worked with IG Farben, which operated Auschwitz. Prescott Bush, he did a number of things that were not only anti-American but were pro-Hitler and he did all that he could to proselytize for Hitler and the rise of his Third Reich because the largest client, Fritz Thiessen, of his patron, W. Averill Harriman, dictated what kind of behavior he would practice to enhance his own career. So he was put on the board of directors of Union Banking Corporation and he was also a shareholder in Union Banking Corporation along with E. Roland Harriman. But what's interesting about what the documents show is that they clearly state that all of the shareholders were phantom shareholders for Fifth Thiessen and did his bidding directly. So the point I'm making is it's not as if they bought these shares of stock as a passive investment to hopefully profit from the war. They were directly doing the bidding of the individual who built the Nazi war machine. Uh, some very shocking documents that I saw at the Library of Congress uh, two weeks ago on August 10th. Uh, on August 9th, excuse me, had to do with the hearings of the McCormick Dickstein Committee of November 1934. Show that Prescott Bush and the uh, DuPont family, the Remington family, and J.P. Morgan tried to overthrow the U.S. government, assassinate FDR, and put a Hitler style fascist state in place. I have in my possession testimony from the McCormick Dickstein Committee in November of 1934 by one of the fascist plotters that they were going to follow Hitler's model exactly and impose martial law on the United States, round up unemployed people that were worthless to the economy and troublemakers and Jews and put them into internment camps. And their plan was, if necessary, to exterminate the people that could not be part of the effort. The only reason the coup attempt in 1934 didn't succeed is that they led, they hired the wrong general to lead it, General Smedley Butler, the great Marine hero, two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner, who worked with the plotters just long enough to be able to identify who they were and then blew the whistle on them to Congress. Incredibly, after being warned by the FBI and the Justice Department and the Treasury Department to cease and desist in their Nazi dealings, they had continued them until 1951. There had been 28 additional seizures of Nazi assets and Nazi business fronts between late 1942 and 1951, and that they had moved Nazi assets into Switzerland, Brazil, Argentina, and Panama, and they had continued to do business with their primary Nazi patron, who was Fritz Thiessen, who backed Hitler beginning in 1921, and who was the wealthiest man in Germany, and a steel and coal baron, who with his partner, Friedrich Flick, essentially built the Nazi war machine along with I.G. Farben. In 1951, when uh, Fritz Thiessen died in Argentina, Union Banking Corporation was liquidated by the U.S. government, and Prescott Bush received $1.5 million for his holdings in his Nazi business, and that was the beginning of the Bush family fortune for all intents and purposes. Schwarzenegger is the son of a Nazi. He has praised Nazis. He has praised Hitler. He talked last night in terms like, we will not falter, we will not waver, we will win this war on terror. He's a leader who doesn't flinch, who doesn't waver, and does not back down. Well, that's exactly the speeches that Hitler made after the Reichstag fire. Terrorism and the homeland being under attack are precisely the issues that Hitler used to subvert everything within the German system of government. This is a criminal regime. They not only emulate Hitler, but its genesis comes from Hitler. And I defy anyone, a historian, journalist, author, anyone, to come forward and disprove my premise that you cannot differentiate Hitler's invasion of Poland in 1939 and the Reichstag fire and his attempt to dominate the world from George W. Bush's unprovoked invasion of Iraq and subversion of the Constitution through the Patriot Act after 9-1-1, which I submit is his Reichstag fire. Karl Rove and his minions are every bit the masters of propaganda that Joseph Goebbels was. They literally took lessons from Goebbels and Goring about how to create such brilliant propaganda 
that unreality can become reality and reality can be subverted.